Video is a WordPress theme built for blogs that want to show off video. With like and dislike buttons, a watch later feature, playlists, low bounce rates, integration with YouTube view counts, and all the features you expect from my theme shot themes such as search engine optimization and responsive design, video is the single best video theme for your site. In this video, I'm going to be showing you completely how to set up the theme, and we're going to start by heading to the My Theme Shop member area at mythemeshop.com slash go slash member. And from here, you want to scroll down on your active premium resources until you find video here. You want to expand that, and then under download, press theme files. You want to save that on your computer. And now before we start, if you haven't got a good knowledge of WordPress, then you want to head over to mythemeshop.com slash WordPress 101. And there you'll be able to find a complete library of video tutorials, which will give you all the skills you need to set up your WordPress site. If you're already familiar with WordPress, then check out WordPress 201, which features some advanced WordPress tutorials. Once you're up to speed with your WordPress skills, we can get started straight away. We want to do that by starting off by installing the theme. So from your WordPress dashboard, you want to go to Appearance and then click on Themes. And from there, you want to press Add New and then Upload Theme. You can then Browse. And from there, you want to select the theme files. Press open and then press install now. And WordPress is going to upload the theme and install it for you. From there, you just need to press activate and you're going to have the video theme running straight away on your site. From there, you'll find some required plugins for you to install on your site. You can just press to install here and it will show you the ones that you haven't got installed on your site already. You want to tick all of these and then just press install and apply and WordPress will download the plugins that you need and then once you're done you can return to the required plugin installer and then click on to activate and again select all of those and you want to uh, select activate there and apply. Once that's done you can head over to the recommended plugin section and here you can choose the plugins that you want in order to enhance your site. These are recommended and they will all integrate beautifully with the theme um, but they are not required. If you've already got content on your site then you might want to install the regenerate thumbnails plugin in order to make sure that all of your images and thumbnails are displaying beautifully on your site. With those set up, we're ready to head over to the theme options and you'll find that under appearance and then click on the theme options. This is the mission control center for the theme and where you can get everything set up. Now we're going to have a look through all of these options in turn, but first head over to import and export and here you're going to find the four pre-built layouts that you'll find on the demo of the theme on mythemeshop.com. And for all of these, you're able to import the theme options, the theme options and widgets, or the theme options, widget and content with just one click. You can check out the links to the demos here just by clicking on the view demo button. And then you're able to import the theme options, widgets and the content if you would like in order to get your site set up really quickly. As I'm going to be showing you these different options, I'm not going to import these now, but if you do want to, then the option is there for you in order to get it set up really quickly. Now, the other thing to do before we get going is head over to YouTube player and then general. And from here, you can control the appearance and functionality of your YouTube player. But what we're interested in right now is setting up the API keys. First, you're going to need a YouTube data version three API key. You want to head to this link here and then head to the Google developer console project section. From here, you want to create a project and you can just enter a name. So I'll go for my theme shop. You can press create. And Google will now take you to a developer screen for this. You want to enable and manage APIs. And then on the right hand side, you'll find YouTube data API. You'll see this is the YouTube data API version three we were after. You can enable this. And once that has loaded, you're going to see that the API is enabled, but you can't use it until you create your project credentials. So you want to press go to credentials, select the YouTube data API version three. You'll be calling from a website browser using JavaScript and you want the data public. Press what credentials do I need? And you can just add in a name as well as your website address. So I can just enter mythemeshop.com here, create API key. That's going to be created for you and you can now just copy and paste onto your theme options here and then that will be set up. Next you have the daily motion API key. This is necessary for retrieving data from daily motion and you can register for an API key here just by following this link. So we'll take you to dailymotion.com and you can follow these instructions in order to get started. 
You want to register for an account if you don't already have one, and then head to your developer profile. You want to press create new API key, add an application name, so I'll just go for my theme shop here. Application description, um, we'll go for video sharing website. You want to add in your website, so mythemeshop.com, and we'll just put in video sharing again. You want to enter a callback URL, um, so again, mythemeshop.com. The application icon is optional, so I'll just leave that out. And you want to add in the capture and then press create API key. That's going to be created for you and you just want to copy the API key and then paste it into your theme options. Finally, you have the Facebook app ID. Again, you want to follow the link and this will take you to facebook.com. You're gonna have a step-by-step -step guide here. You can log into Facebook, create a developer account. I've already done these, so I'm just going to now create a new Facebook app. You want to create a website and then you want to skip this and create app ID. You want the display name, so mythemeshop.com and then the unique identifier is optional. You can add a category, which will be entertainment and then create app ID. You want to go through this capture process. Um, so here, just select those. Press submit and then Facebook will create an app ID for you. Once that's done, you'll see that displayed here and you can just copy and paste onto the theme options. Once those are done, you can press save changes and you're going to have all of the API set up and we can get ready with the rest of the setup for the site. Now, first we have the general settings and this tab contains the common settings which will be applied to the whole theme. First off, that includes your logo and here you can add your own logo. I'm just going to remove this one here in order to show you how to add your own. You can press browse and you can either then upload a file or choose from one you've already got uploaded to your WordPress media library. I'm going to upload a file here. I'll just press select files. And from there, I can just select my logo, press open and then select image. That's going to add my logo to the site. It's the same for adding a favicon as well as a touch and metro icons. You can also add a contact form recipient. So if you want to enter an email address for your contact form, so I'll just add in mine here. You can also add in your Twitter username as well as your FeedBurner URL. You can sign up for a free FeedBurner account at feedburner.com. And if you want to get additional analytics on your RSS readers, then you can just add in your FeedBurner URL here. This wants to be the full URL, so feedburner.com uh, slash my theme shop in my case. You can also add header code. This might be Google Webmaster Tools Verification, Bing Webmaster Center, Buy Sell Ad Scripts, and so on, as well as any code you want added to your footer. This might be Google Analytics, Clicky, Stack Counter, and so on. Next, you can choose the pagination type. You'll see you have four options. You have a default, which is next and previous, a numbered one, two, three, four, or an AX load more, or an AX infinite scroll. If I load up my site, we'll see currently we've got this numbered pagination. So when the user is at the bottom of the page, they're going to have numbered options to uh, access different posts. If we change this to an AX load more button and then save those changes, if we now refresh our site, you'll see that these numbers have been replaced by this button that will load more. You can press that and that's going to load additional content without actually leaving the page. And this is a really nice way of improving the user experience and making sure that users have a great time on your website. You can also set that to infinite scroll if you'd like. Um, so when users get to the bottom, then uh, extra posts are going to load automatically without the need for a button. I'll just leave this on load more, but you can set that to any of those that you like. You can also enable or disable the AX quick search. Similar to the pagination, this will have results displaying instantly below the search form. So I'll turn this on and if I just head over to a page on my site where we've got some search, I'll just start entering text here and you're gonna see the search results are displayed immediately. I don't actually have to click through to the results in order to see those. Again, that's a really nice way of improving the user experience on your site. You can also turn on or off the responsive design. By default, this is going to be on and this will ensure that visitors using mobile or tablet devices have a specific version of the website pre-built for them. If you want to just display the desktop site for everyone, then you can turn this off, but you probably want to leave this on. If you're using a language using right to left language, then you can turn on the option for that here. You also have the option to use the watch later video function for video posts. So if I just load up my homepage here, you'll see if I hover over a video, I can see the watch later button. If I press this, this is going to add this to the watch later queue. 
So here I've added two videos and I can now click on watch later in order to load up these bookmarked videos that I want to watch later. This is the great way of um, having your visitors more engaged and coming back to your site. You also have the option to show either a YouTube counter for views, a local counter, so that's just on your website, or have the view counter off. So if I just load up one of these YouTube videos, you'll see that below the video we've got um, the views displaying here. So you can set that to display either YouTube, local, or have that off. Finally, if you're using the WooCommerce plugin, then you can select the number of products that are going to display on the shop page. Once you're done making those changes, you'll want to make sure you save, and next we can have a look at the Performance tab. This tab contains performance-related options which can help speed up your website. With video, this is really important so that you can get your users seeing videos as fast as possible. First up, you have the option to enable or disable prefetching. Prefetching works in modern browsers so that if the user is on the home page, then single pages will load faster, and if vice versa, the user is on a single page, then the home page is going to load faster. So this is prefetching, and it works in modern browsers, and you probably want to have that on in order to speed up your website. You can also have lazy loading for images. This will delay the loading of images outside of the main viewport of the screen, so that's the section of the screen that you can actually see, um, until the user scrolls to that. So if you turn this on, you have the option to additionally lazy load featured images or content images. Um, so if you have this on, then you're going to have featured images lazy loading, and if you have this one on, you're going to have content images loading as well. In order to make sure your content loads super fast, you might want to have um, it off for featured images so they all load, but post images lazy loading. This will be a nice way of striking a nice balance between page loading speed and user experience. You have the option to add async JavaScript tags in order to improve the page download speed. That'll just make sure all your JavaScript loads at once, as well as removing verb parameters from CSS and JavaScript file calls. Um, this may improve the speed in some browsers which don't have caching files in their parameters. Finally, if you're using the WooCommerce plugin, then we'd recommend that you optimize your WooCommerce scripts, and this will just make those pages load a bit faster. You can also use a caching plugin. We'd recommend that you use either W3 Total Cache or WP Super Cache, as these will improve the page download speed of your site dramatically. You, these are both free plugins, and you can just click these links in order to get to them and install. Once you're done, make sure you save those changes. And we can now have a look at the styling options. With this tab, you can control the visual appearance of your theme, including colors, layouts, and patterns. The first option that you're going to see here are color schemes, and with this color picker, you can choose any color on the color spectrum in order to make sure that the primary color on the site matches your brand. You've got blacks, whites, as well as different colors preset here, and you can also choose the tint in order to get one that matches your site. You can also enter your own HTML hex codes in order to get a specific color, or you can just drag these in order to choose. I might just choose a blue here and change that tint. If I save those changes, and you can now see in just a couple of moments, I'm able to change the dominant primary color on my site from that red to the blue, and you can see that reflected throughout the site's entire design. So with this option, you can get a color that matches your brand. You can also choose the default sidebar position for your site. This can be changed on a per post basis in the post editor, but here you can set the global option. Currently it's aligned right, um, but if I change it to left here and save those changes, um, and if we just load up a page with a sidebar here, um, then you're going to see that the sidebar is now on the left hand side. You can customize your site's background color. You can set a color here, and again it's the same color picker as before. Or you can choose a background pattern, upload an image, including a parallax effect, and you've also got the option to change the repeat, attachment, position, and size, or you can choose a gradient, and here you can use these color pickers in order to select between two colors as well as the direction. I'll set a pattern here, and we'll just go for a nice subtle pattern. If I save those changes, and if we now just load up our homepage, you'll see we've now got this nice subtle pattern in the background. You can also add your own custom CSS. Um, this will override the default CSS on your site. If you are making advanced changes though, then you'll want to use a child theme, and we'll cover those later. Your final option here is to add a light box. A light box is a stylized pop-up that allows visitors to view larger versions of images without leaving the current page. And you can enable or disable the light box here. And this will just mean that when the users click on images, they're going to be able to stay on the same page without having to leave and you can save those changes once you are done. Next up then, we can have a look at the header tab. This tab is going to give us options to control elements of the header section. 
First up, you'll see the header background color. And here you can just use this color picker in order to change this color here. So I might change this to a blue to match the rest of our site, save those changes. And if we refresh now, you're gonna see that we've got this blue in the background here. You can also change the floating navigation menu. You'll see currently, if I scroll down the page, the navigation menu comes with me. If we turn this off and save those changes, you'll see that the uh, navigation is going to say static at the top of the page, and it doesn't come with us as we scroll. You can also choose to disable the primary navigation menu entirely, so that's this one here, as well as change the header buttons. These are the custom links on the right side of the header, so you'll see three of these here at the moment. Um, we've got Facebook, and you can see you can choose the social icon for the social uh, site you want to add, as well as a color. And again, we've got the Facebook color here and a link URL. So here we've just got a link to the My Theme Shop Facebook page. And it's the same for Twitter and Google+. You can drag and drop in order to move these around and as well as add your own buttons. You can press add button and you can add as many of these as you like. You can delete the ones you don't want, so I'll just leave these current ones here, um, but perhaps uh, change the order so Google Plus is second. After that, you've got the option to show or hide the submit video button. You're gonna find this to the right of the social buttons in the header, and you see if you press this link, this is going to take users to a page where they can submit their own videos. This can be a great way to generate content for your site as well as let users interact with you. Users can paste in a video link, add a title, as well as a description, and then enter their name and their email address. So I'll just add in my theme shop team, and then team at mythemeshop.com. Press send, and that's going to be submitted, and users will then be able to add that to the site. You can also customize the icon as well as the button text and URL for the uh, submit video button in order to get this displaying on a page on your site where users can submit their own videos. You also have the option to show or hide the logo completely, as well as if you're using the WooCommerce plugin, you can show or hide the account and cart link. Note, you do need to have the WooCommerce plugin enabled in order to use this. You want to save those changes once you are done. Next up, we have the footer section, and from here, you can control the elements displaying in your footer. You can turn on or off footer widgets. You'll see we have these three widget areas here, and you can turn this on or off. You can also change the background color for this section, and again, it's just a color picker. It's the same for the copyright background, um, so you'll see this lower section here, We've got a slightly different color um, in order to just differentiate that. You can show or hide the footer navigation menu, as well as change the copyright text. You can change this here, um, and if you want to leave a link to mythemeshop.com, and check out the affiliate program where you can earn 70% of the value of the sales that you refer. It's a nice way just to promote my theme shop and get a little kickback on that as well. You can save those changes once you are done, and next up, we can have a look at the homepage options. Here you have the option to control the elements of the homepage. This includes the featured posts. This will enable or disable the homepage slider. If you have this off, then the sections below are going to disappear. Below that, you have the option to choose the categories that the slider displays. You can just click on this in order to load up all of the categories on your site, so I can just choose these here, as well as press select all in order to load all of those. I'll save those changes. If I refresh my site, you'll see I've got this home page featured section, and this is the categories that are pulling from that. You can also choose what displays on the right-hand column of the home page. You'll see we've got popular posts displaying at the moment, but we can choose to change this to a sidebar or random posts. I'll just leave this on popular, you can also choose what displays on the right hand side of archives. So if we just load up an archive here, we'll see on the right hand side we've got random posts, but you can change this again to be a sidebar, popular or random. If you're using popular posts, you can choose to set a day limit on that. So you can set that to a month or you can just turn that off by setting it to naught. Save those changes once you are done. And next up, we can have a look at single content. On this section, we can control the appearance and functionality of your single post page. First, you can choose the layout. You can choose to have content, comments, related posts, and a sidebar next to them, or to have content all the way across, and then comments and related posts. Final option is to have content, comments, and related posts all, all the way across. 
I'll just change this to content and then comments and related posts. And if we save those changes, and I just load up a page on our site, you're gonna see we've now got this large video at the front, and then we've got uh, comments and related posts displaying next to it. You can choose whether to have the featured image as your player thumbnail. This will set the uh, featured image that you set on your post as the thumbnail here. You have that on or off. Um, if you have that off, then the standard thumbnail is going to display. You can also choose whether to download video thumbnails. With YouTube videos, this will then download the thumbnails and set it as a featured image automatically for you. You can also have breadcrumbs on or off. These are a great way of making your site just a little bit more user-friendly and they just show the trail of where the user has come from, up to the different categories, up to the homepage. If we have breadcrumbs on, then you'll be able to see those displaying there. You can also have the like or dislike feature on or off. Um, so that's this one here. Users can choose whether to like or dislike a video on your site. You can also choose to have the share pop up when a video ends. So if I just scroll to the end of this video here, you'll be able to see that when the video ends, we've got a pop up automatically loading, um, which will invite the user to share the video. This is the best time to load this pop-up as users has a higher propensity to share once they have finished the video. You see I have links to uh, Facebook as well as Twitter and a preview of this thumbnail. User can choose to close the box. You can turn this off, but it's a great way of making your site a little bit more viral and making the most out of your users. You can also choose to have the post meta info on or off. This will show or hide the author and categories. So you'll see those displaying here. You can have that on or off. You can also choose which meta info to show. You have date, categories, and author name, and you can just tick or untick these. You can also choose whether to have a tag cloud below your related post, and that's on or off. You can also have your author box on or off, and you can just use these two buttons in order to customize that. Finally, you have the option to show Facebook comments or standard comments, or both in tabs. So you'll see at the moment, I've got standard comments and then Facebook comments. But if you want to just have one of these, then you can uh, drag and drop in order to disable. If you've got Facebook comments on, then you'll need to enter your Facebook app ID, which you can create just by following that link. You can also choose to highlight author comments, as well as show related posts with thumbnails below the content area in a post. So you'll see these displaying here, and that's just a really nice way of making sure your visitors stay on your site. You can choose whether to have your related posts sorted by categories or tags, as well as the number to show. And you can just use these numbers in order to select that. Final option here is to have the date in comments, and if you have this on, then the date will show, and vice versa for off. Make sure you save your changes once those are finished. And next up, we can have a look at the YouTube player options. We've already had a look at the general settings to have a look at the API keys, but if we load this up again, we can have a look at the rest of these options. So the first of these next options is the default video volume. And here you can choose the default volume to have that muted or enter a custom percentage. If you're doing that, then you'll want to enter a number here. So you might have 70% volume as your default. You can also force the player to show HD content. So that's either 720p or 1080p. And also show or hide YouTube video controls whilst the video is playing. And you can just turn that on or off. You can show or hide interactive annotations on YouTube videos, as well as show or hide the full screen control. Note that not all browsers support full screen, and so on these browsers, the button will always be hidden. You can show or hide the YouTube logo in the player, as well as show or hide the channel in the player title. That can just be on or off. You want to save those changes once you are done. And next up, we can have a look at the playlist options. And from here, you can control the functionality of your YouTube player with playlists. You can choose the playlist layout, and this can either be vertical with the playlist on the right or horizontal with the playlist on the bottom. If I just load up my site here, then we'll be able to see that um, currently we have the playlist on the uh, right hand side. But if we change this setting here, um, then we can have the playlist on the bottom. I'll just save those changes and refresh this page. You'll be able to see those in action there with the playlist now displaying along the bottom. And that just makes the video a little bit wider for you. You can also customize the number of videos to load in your playlist. The maximum option is 50 due to YouTube's API limitations, but with pagination, you can retrieve up to 50 videos at a time. So currently this is set to 10, um, but you can just change this number in order to customize that. 
You can customize having a load more button, um, which will appear once the maximum number of video results has been reached, as well as have continuous play on or off. So that will just load the next video in the playlist once the current one has finished. You can also, if you'd like to choose to shuffle the playlist upon loading, and again, you can just turn that on or off there. You want to make sure you save those changes once you're finished. And next up, we can have a look at the color options. You see, you've got a number of preset colors here to choose from to control the YouTube player. So at the moment, we've got this black theme, um, but you can change this to any one of these presets. Um, I'll just show you what that looks like here. If we just refresh the page, you have to see we've got this different color player going on now. And you can just customize that in order to fit in with the look of the rest of your site as well as your brand. Next then we can have a look at social buttons and here you can customize the social sharing buttons that appear on single posts. You've got all of these different options including Facebook like, Facebook share, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn and StumbleUpon and you can drag and drop in order to reorder these as well as disable by um, dragging over to disabled. So I'll just get rid of uh, Pinterest and LinkedIn perhaps but add in Twitter there. If we save those changes you have to see currently the sharing options are these ones here, um, but if we refresh this, then we'll be able to change those sharing buttons. And that just shows you how easy this section is to use. So we've now got these four that we selected there. Next up, we can have a look at ad management. And this ad management section makes managing your adverts using the video theme very easy without the need for separate plugins. You have a number of different advert areas here and you can choose to paste in your ad code. You've got a header area that will show ads below the header area, as well as below post title and below post content. Now for these two in post, you have the option to uh, hide the advert for a certain number of days after the post has been published. So you might want to enter seven here, and this would hide the advert below the post title for one week after the post is published, so that perhaps your regular users don't see these adverts, but search engine users, you can capitalize on those. And so you can enter your code here and then enter the number of days in order to set that. If you want to disable this feature, you can just set this to naught, and it's the same for below post content. You want to save those changes once you are done, and next up, we can have a look at the sidebars. Now for the unlimited sidebars, as well as navigation and WordPress widgets, we've got more detailed videos available on mythemeshop.com. So if you want these in any more detail, we're gonna look at them now, but if you want any more detail, then head over to mythemeshop.com and you'll be able to find specific videos for each of those. Now the custom sidebars is a really powerful tool and allows you to have unlimited sidebars for each section of your site. I'll show you how this works. So you can add a sidebar area. Um, so for example, we might go for an archive sidebar. Um, I'll just spell that correctly as well. And we can just add in an ID here. So we'll just go for a sidebar archive. You want to press OK and then save those changes. That will just refresh the options page. You can now apply this custom sidebar, which will create an extra widget area in appearance and then widgets. We'll have a look at that later. You can now apply the sidebar to different areas of your sites. So on the category archive, we can apply the archive sidebar here. We also have options for um, the homepage, single post, single page, all these different types of archive, as well as search, 404 errors, and the WooCommerce plugin, two options there. You can apply the sidebar to each of these, as well as for single pages and posts, you've got the option to have the default archive or no sidebar at all. You can create as many of these custom sidebars as you like, and you can delete those if you do not want them. So I'll save those changes. And now if we head over to appearance and then widgets, we'll be able to see that we've got an extra widget area created. So we have our default sidebar, but we now also have an archive sidebar. So I'll just drag and drop the search form um, from one to the other in order to show you how this works. So I'll just load up a page with a regular sidebar. And we can see we've now just got the featured category and the search form has been removed. If we now go to a category archive though, we're gonna see that we've now got this search form displaying here and any other content we put in the category archive widget area would display here. So that's a really powerful option for really customizing your site and you can apply as many of these as you want. Next up then is navigation and loading this will bring you a link to the WordPress menu editor. And from here, you can customize the look and feel of your WordPress menus. You can select your menu to edit up here if you've got them created already, or you can create a new menu just by pressing this button. 
On the left hand side, you're going to have all of the content you can add to your menu, including pages. And if you just click view all, you're going to be able to access these. You've got posts as well, as well as options for the WooCommerce plugin, custom links where you can add in links to any website, as well as categories and so on. So you can just tick the item you want to add. So for example, I could tick stories, press add to menu. That's going to add it to the bottom of the menu. You can then drag and drop in order to move this around. And if you want to indent this in order to create a sub menu, then you can do so. Spanning this will bring you some additional options, including changing the navigation menu, title attribute, CSS classes, and the icon if you would like to. And you can just click on this link in order to load up some additional icons. So I'll save that menu. And if we now have a look at our site, if I just refresh this, you'll see I've added in a sub menu here and we can access that just by hovering over. So the WordPress menu system is really powerful. You can drag and drop in order to access the menus and get it looking how you want. Once you've created your menu, um, if you haven't already, you'll want to apply it to a location. So you can just choose this drop down here in order to add it to the primary menu, footer menu, or have a specific menu for mobile devices as well. You'll want to save those changes once you are done, and we can now head back to the theme options and have a look at the typography options. Now from here, you can control the fonts used on your site. You can choose between the 17 standard font sets or use the Google Fonts library, which has over 600 fonts. As there are so many fonts in the library, you might want to click on this link in order to find a font that you like and then apply it to your site. Now I'll just show you how this works using the navigation font, but it's the same for all of these different options, which include all of the different uh, fonts used on your site. If you load up this font button here, you can access all of the 17 WebSafe standard fonts, or if you scroll past that, you're gonna have all of the Google Font Library fonts. As there are so many fonts available, you can also search. So for example, I might want to uh, change this from standard Roboto to Roboto Slab. And doing so will bring me up a preview here. You can also change the font weight if it's available for your font. Um, so I might just have that slightly stronger, as well as change the size. You can change the color if you'd like, and you'll see this just loads up the color picker here, um, and you can access all of these colors here. I'll just set this um, to a slightly gray. If you click on more, then you have some additional options, including CSS selectors, it's, this is applied to, and any additional CSS. You can also choose a fallback font, and this will load if the Google font you've selected is not available. So if we save those changes and then have a look at our site, if I just refresh this, you'll be able to see that the navigation font has changed from Roboto to Roboto Slab with that lighter font weight. Now, as I mentioned, it's the same for all of these different options and you can just play around in order to get a look that you want for your site. At the bottom, you'll find character sets. And if you're using a language with non-Latin characters, then you can tick these boxes in order to load additional character sets. Note that these character sets aren't going to be available for all the fonts. Save those changes once you are done, and we can now head back to the Import and Export tab that we saw earlier. Now below the preset options, you also have options to import and export your options code. If we click on Show Export Code, this will load up a bunch of text which you can copy and paste into a document in order to save and create a backup of your options. And you can also import the code in order to load that up onto different sites. So if you're moving sites between a local and a live version of your site, you can quickly import these here as well. That's just a really nice backup and import feature. Finally, we've got child themes. And if you're making advanced customizations for your site, then you'll want to make a child theme so you do not lose these changes as you're making upgrades. You can just enter a name here. So I might go for video child theme, and then you want to press create child theme. If you save those changes, then video is going to create that child theme for you. And you can now access it by heading to appearance and then themes and then activating the child theme. If you then make your changes in the child theme itself, you'll be able to make those changes without having them deleted every time you upgrade your theme. So it's just a really nice way of future-proofing your site. So that concludes our look through the theme options. And now we can have a look at the widgets. And you can have access to these just by heading to Appearance and then Widgets. Now, widgets are a really powerful tool for customizing your site, and you've got a number available here. On the left hand side, you've got the available widgets and you can find these just by scrolling down as well as you'll find the theme specific ones with the MTS, my theme shop prefix. These are built specifically for the theme. On the right hand side, you've got the widget areas and these are the areas where you can drag the widgets into in order to display on your site. 
So for example, if I just wanted to uh, display some recent posts, I could do so. I just drag and drop the widgets into the widget area I want it to display on. So you'll see here, this is my sidebar. This is the default sidebar. And dragging and dropping the widget loads up some options. You have these options for all widgets. I've got a title as well as I can choose the number of posts to display. I can just change this here. Um, perhaps we'll have four posts. Title length as well as options for thumbnails, post date, number of comments and excerpt and so on. I can customize these to get them looking how I want and if I save those changes they're going to be made immediately on my site. So I'll just load up a page with a sidebar here and we'll now see I've got recent posts displaying as well as a featured category below. And so that is reflected in the options I've set here. You can also drag and drop in order to move widgets around the different widget areas. So if I wanted to move these recent posts um, perhaps to the footer, to footer 2 appears in the bottom of the footer. If I refresh this, we'll see that widget is now moved straight away to the bottom of the widget. And we can now see we've got that there. As that's duplicated, we might want to move that again, perhaps to the archive sidebar. You can just drag and drop in order to move those around. And those options will save automatically. So it's really worth spending some time with widgets in order to get the look that you want with your site and looking around the different widgets available and different widget areas in order to customize those. The final thing to show you then is setting up video posts on your site. If we head to posts, then you'll be able to see we've got all of these different videos displaying on our site and I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to create a new post in order to show you this from scratch. So we just press add new here. Now the video I want to share in this post is one from GoPro. And if I press share here, I can access the URL and this has the ID on it. You want to copy that. And now if we head back to our site, we can add in the content. So I'm just going to add in the title here. And then on the right hand side, we can choose the post type. Currently this is set to standard, but if we set this to video, we're going to see that the video options meta box pops up and here we can add in our video information. We can choose the service. So we want to choose YouTube here. You can then choose either video or playlist. So here we want a video and you can now just paste in the playlist or video ID. And that's what we copied earlier. You can have auto play on or off or just choose the default, which is off in our case, as well as choose the start and end time. This is in seconds and you can leave this empty if you want the video to play to the end. So we might um, skip the logo, for example, and start at two seconds in. You can also choose to show related videos at the end of the video. We'll leave that off, um, but you can choose to show who has submitted the video. So we'll just show my theme shop team. If we publish this and then have a look at our site, then we're able to see that we've got this large featured area here with the video displaying. We've got information pulled from the video, including view count, sharing icons, as well as likes and dislikes. We can see it's submitted by the My Theme Shop team. If we now head over to the home page, then we're also going to see that this video is added to the featured area and the new video section. You'll also see we've got this large featured image displaying on the video. And this is actually the thumbnail of the video. And the theme has automatically grabbed this from the video itself. This is a really useful way of saving time. And if we scroll down here, we'll see that the featured image is set to the thumbnail from the video. You can also customize this if you'd like. So if we remove that and add our own in here, you can either upload an image or choose one from the WordPress media library. So I could perhaps choose this dramatic image here, set that as my featured image. And if we update that and just refresh on the video, then you're gonna see that the featured image changes to that image that you can set yourself. The theme also gives you the option to customize the post layout on a post by post basis. So you can choose between layouts one, two, and three here, and just select those and um, apply to your site in order to get those displaying. You can also choose between a number of video services as I showed you earlier. We've got YouTube, but also Vimeo. In order to use Vimeo, you want to add the Vimeo video ID. You'll find that by going to vimeo.com, finding the video that you want, pressing share here, and then you want to select the last section of that link. Paste it in there, and that's your Vimeo video ID. You can also do for daily motion. For this, you want the short URL ID. You'll find this by heading to dailymotion.com. You want to press share, and then make sure that short URL is ticked here. And again, copy the last part of that ID there. Paste that in and make sure you've just got the last part of the ID. 
and that'll be your daily motion video ID there. Finally, for Facebook, you want to copy the Facebook video ID. For this, you want to find the video you want on facebook.com and then copy the last section of the URL here. Head back to your post and then you can paste in the Facebook video ID. You can then update those changes once you are finished. And with that, that concludes our look around the video theme. I hope this has been a helpful tutorial for you and helped you get your website set up as fast as possible. If you do need any further assistance, then head over to community.mythemeshop.com and someone will be more than happy to help you. I hope this video has been helpful and thank you very much for watching. Thank you.